They thought they had Christ in their grasp. They thought they could do with him as they pleased. Thus did they mutilate him and nail him to the cross. They laughed as he promised his vengeance would fall upon them. But he stayed true to his words. The earth they trod upon ran red with blood. The cities they resided in were engulfed by flames. Having witnessed their defeat, they hid amidst the faithful. They thought they would be safe. They were mistaken. Ever steadfast inquisitors, masters at discerning subtleties and signs, followed their trail. With the words of the scripture, did they convert the heretics? With fire, did they cleanse the witches? By their hands were the deceitful vampires impaled. In the name of Christ and for his eternal glory! Welcome to Königstein, Master Inquisitor. My name's Bertram, the Guard Captain. Mortimer Manadine, licensed Inquisitor, in service to the Bishop of Hez Hezram. The Holy Office informed us of your arrival. I must admit that I'm surprised by the purpose of this visit. I don't believe there's a vampire lurking in Königstein. There hasn't been a recorded sighting of one in these parts for what must have been a century. That doesn't mean there isn't one here. Fair enough. That's why my men and I will do our best to assist you. As far as we are able to, of course. Thank you, Captain. I'm just following the mayor's orders, so it's him you should be thanking, not me. If you wish to express your gratitude personally, go to the fair. He's attempting to raise funds there today. My men will show you the way. Now, please excuse me. I need to check on the outposts at the other gates. You were right. He's an Inquisitor. I told you. I spotted the Inquisitor's insignia right away. Only they can wear the bloody dog catcher. <laughs> Quiet, fool or you'll bring trouble on our heads. What did you call me? Uh, uh... He meant no offense, Master. He doesn't think that at all. Those who disrespect an Inquisitor, disrespect the Holy Office. Your commander will hear of this. He will administer your punishment. Don't do it, Master. The captain will throw me out of the guard. I beg you, have mercy. Why, isn't today a celebration of Christ triumphant? Are you tempting an Inquisitor into committing the sin of mercy? Please. I'll do anything for you. Anything? I swear by the broken cross. The captain mentioned there's a fair currently being held in town. Where exactly? In the town square. You can't miss it, Master. But be wary of ruffians. The sons of whores are always lurking near the stands. Do you know anything about a vampire? One is supposedly lurking around these parts. I haven't heard anything. How about you? Me neither. 
Um, what's gonna happen to me? I'll find you. Should the need arise. Then we shall see the value of your oath. Devils who don't shy away from a challenge. A tournament is being held to win the favor of the queen of last year's Mama's Parade. The winner will have the honor of entertaining the beautiful Liliana during the Mama's Parade, which will begin tomorrow after the Vespers service, as is customary. Anyone can try their luck. The entry fee is but one silver angel. Reach into your purses. The collected funds will go toward building a new monument to Christ triumphant. One majestic enough to eclipse that piece of trumpery from Schwebus. Well, well. The Inquisitor himself graces us with his presence. 
I'm happy to see you, Master. I am Guido von Herzen, the town's mayor. It is nice to meet you, Mayor. What is your name, Master? Mortimer Matadine. Mortimer. I'll be sure to remember that. Emissaries of the Holy Office rarely visit us. I do hope that Captain Bertram gave you a proper welcome. He's a soldier through and through. He can come off as blunt and boorish, but I've yet to meet a better soldier. His behavior was befitting of a guard commander. He brought you no shame. Excellent. I'll gladly speak to you later, but now I must attend to a certain matter. And the tournament, of course. I only wish to thank you for offering assistance in catching the vampire. If you truly wish to thank me, take part in the tournament. You'll be mixing business with pleasure. I shouldn't waste time on idle merriment. Although, since the Monument to Christ Triumphant is at stake, add my name to the list. I'm so happy! The other contestants looked insufferably boring, but you're something else. I noticed it immediately. Well, I'm far from ordinary. You'll be the king of the Mama's Parade, which necessitates that you wear the proper attire. Not far from here, there's a merchant who deals in fancy clothing. Buy a costume from him, even if it's only a mask. Meanwhile, I'll attend to my errands. I will see you later. Upon reaching Golgotha, the centurion in command of the legionnaires gazed upon Jesus and said, Hop up onto the cross I've set up for you! Jesus obeyed the command, as he didn't want the centurion's work to have been for naught. However, his time upon the cross was brief. It's pretty uncomfortable up here. He longed for his freedom. So he broke the patibulum and leapt to the ground. You destroyed my beautiful cross! Woe upon you! The centurion threw himself at the Messiah, sword in hand. But Jesus did not allow him to strike. He who raises the cross dies by the cross. He seized the broken arm of the cross and struck first. Emperor Tiberius became wroth upon learning that. He decided to deal with Christ personally. You killed my loyal servant. It'll cost you your head. That I swear. Here's my payment. Jesus snatched the centurion's sword and cut off Tiberius' head. Thus, oath and payment of one. The Emperor is dead. Long live Jesus triumphant, our Lord and everlasting King! And that is how Christ claimed the throne of the Emperor. <laughs> Finally, an opponent. I was starting to put down roots. Merde. 
Merde. Non, 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 non. Encore Enough. Time for real combat. I rarely meet my betters. You've given me a valuable lesson. Thank you. It's the same oh, punk who me. Sense of armor? Buy your costumes. Tomorrow's the mama's parade. Ruffian! <laughs> he went there! He stole my purse! It's not him. Let go! It hurts! Show me what's in your hand first. I saw you take it from a town person's cart. It's just an apple. What's your name? And where are your parents? I'm Amelia. And my parents and siblings are dead. They all died two years ago from the Plague of Pox. So, who looks after you now? Nobody. I don't need anyone looking after me. I can look after myself. By stealing. I was hungry. You won't fill your belly with just anything. What are you gonna do with me? Hand me over to the guards? Thievery needs to be punished. However, Christ did say, Take and eat, you who have known hunger. It is why I conquered this land. Off you go then, and eat your fill. Welcome, Master Inquisitor. How can I be of service? Inquisitor? Well, we're colleagues, then. Name's Roland, Master Executioner. Mortimer Matadine, licensed Inquisitor, in service to the Bishop of Hezhezran. If you need help, stop by the dungeons. I have a few toys there that will certainly make your job easier. Well, merchant, you've wasted enough of my time. Got anything for the executioner? Here are the mask and costume of the merry executioner from Tianon. The butcher who disappeared off the face of the earth a few years ago? He was a devil. So devils dragged him under. He's sure to be dancing in hell as we speak. Poppycock! Piss off or I'll give you a good lashing. How did the mask of the Merry Executioner from Tianan find its way to a merchant's stand? Look at it, Inquisitor! Beautiful, isn't it?
It's been a while since I've had a vision. Why would Christ decide to send me one now? What is it he wanted to tell me? <laughs> What's with you, Inquisitor? You seem at a loss for words. I bet you'd like to buy the costume of the Merry Executioner for yourself. Absolutely not. I was first. Damned headsman. He paid with gold he got from a convict on the scaffold. I saw the wretch put a coin in his hand, begging for one clean cut. What do you mean? Didn't it take him three swings to behead the man? The butcher revels in cruelty. Supposedly, he lost his position as royal executioner. You're better off taking your own life than letting him lay his mitts on you. From where did you get the mask and costume of the Merry Executioner from Tiananmen? I knew him, so I know that he considered the Jester costume a shameful symbol of degeneration and brutishness, which is why he hid it. No one knew where. I... bought it, Master. Where? And from whom? Talk! An old lady sold it to me. One I met on the road, leading through the woods. I saw her dog digging out the Merry Executioner's outfit. I'd seen the man many times in the past, so I immediately recognized the mask. I paid a fair price for it. The scoundrel's hiding something. I can feel it. Friend! Shut your mouth, Mutt! I'm gonna beat you so bad you won't have the strength to break your wounds! Leave it alone, brat. Our Lord treated lesser creatures with love and respect. He'd be wise to do the same. Take it, sir. Pop told me to teach the dog discipline. I, I was only doing what he told me. Something stinks here. No one names a dog friend if they want to sell it. Where did you get it from? We bought it from an old lady we met in the woods. Come on, friend. You're coming with me. To pick up the pail, move it to the end of the white line in a vertical position, and then place it in the hole that's been made there. If you drop the pail on your way there, you'll have to start again from the beginning.
Finally. I guess the town's treasury must be empty if you have to raise funds personally. <laughs> no, Master Metterdine, it's not as bad as that. The holiday tournament and fundraiser are simply old customs. Sadly, citizens of Königstein are beginning to suffer from poverty. There are fewer and fewer daredevils willing to join in the revelry. And this year, our goal is a lofty one indeed. However, I'm not certain if the funds we raise will be enough to achieve it. Surely the Cardinal will boast your finances. After all, we're talking about building a monument to Christ triumphant. Oh, I wish I could believe that. Unfortunately, His Eminence considers generosity on par with wastefulness. Hey, children. Have you heard any rumors about a vampire? A vampire? What's that? It's a monster. Granny said it has long fangs and can fly. Andy likes to drink blood. What? Why blood? To, to live a long time. So maybe my grandpa is a vampire? He he's got to be a hundred years old. <laughs> Why are you laughing? What's it called? Friend. <laughs> Stop it, friend. <laughs> Stop. He likes you. He's yours. Really? Take good care of him. Hear that, friend? Will you come with me? <laughs> Thank you. Let's go. This is a good place for a journey to the Unworld. Our Father, what our King, bereave us of our weakness, lest we forgive those who trespass against us. Draw out evil from darkness, so we may vanquish in thy name.
should have sold me the mask. Your amulet betrayed you. Should have sold me the mask and costume when I was asking nicely. Which? You're probably wondering how I knew you for a witch. Hmm? Your amulet betrayed you. <laughs> we'll meet again, Knave. I don't think so. Farewell, friend. You didn't buy the Mary Executioner's costume. You took it from the old lady that you burnt at the stake. How do you know all this? You're a fool if you think I'm about to explain myself to you. Forgive me, Master. I didn't want to speak of it in front of my customers. They wouldn't buy my wares that they heard. She was a witch. A real witch. I did a good deed by killing her. You would have done the same in my place. The Mandrake amulet you took from her has to be destroyed. Give it to me. The Holy Office does not tolerate lynching. Only licensed inquisitors are allowed to sentence people to the stake, and only after a thorough investigation. You are not a licensed inquisitor, are you? Guards! Yes, Master? The merchant violated an inquisitorial prerogative. Take him to the dungeon. 
Leave me be. I haven't done anything wrong. She was a witch. Get your fucking hands off my father, you scoundrels. The mouthy punk was tormenting the dog. Put him in the stocks for an entire day. Let the children throw some horse dung at him. It'll teach the punk to treat lesser creatures with respect. With pleasure, master. Ah! Ow! Ow! I won't bear to stand! In the name of the Holy Office, I hereby confiscate the merchandise to cover the costs of your trial. Seal this lousy stand once he's locked in a cell. Unless the people steal everything by then. No! I beg you! It's all I have! Now that this is settled, I could use some wine. Is your wine any good? Finest Rhenish vintage, Master Inquisitor. Sweet as the body of a virgin, and strong to boot. Pour a rumor. That'll be five silver angels. Five? That's highway robbery. Rhenish vintages have gone up in price recently. Fine, then. Here you go. There you are! Do you have the mask? By the Lord's sword. I completely forgot about that. Men, you have time until tomorrow. Now come, you'll walk me home. On the way, you'll tell me why you were dispatched to Königstein. If it's not a secret, that is. It's not. Everyone will be talking about it soon anyway. The Holy Office received news of a vampire prowling the town. I am to see if there is any truth to it. A vampire in Königstein? This is the first time I'm hearing about it. The Holy Office hears much more than ordinary people. So then, how do you intend to find it? I'll start with the inns. I'll listen to the rumors. Ask around with the staff and the regulars. Then you should definitely stop by the Frisky Mermaid. It's the town's most popular inn. The fat innkeeper is likely to know about everything that's going on in Königstein.
them, robbers. Kill them. In the name of the Lord. Redcoats. Like it. We are grateful for the rescue. You've arrived just in time. Such was God's will. Who were the assailants? I don't know. Didn't recognize any of them. I know that one from the harbor. Must have been part of that gang. We've been looking for you, mistress. The cardinal asks that you come to the cathedral post haste. You? I don't know. Who are you? Mortimer Matadine, licensed inquisitor, in service to the Bishop of Hez Ezran. Forgive the insistence, Master Matadine. Welcome to Königstein. I shall inform the Cardinal of your arrival. His eminence is currently preoccupied, but he will certainly wish to speak with you later. Come to the cathedral between the first and second tolling of the bells for Vespers. It is the time of day when the Cardinal talks to worshippers. Do not worry about the bodies of these villains. The town guard will dispose of them. Tell the Cardinal that I will be there. Please forgive my brusqueness, Mordemar. This assault made me lose my composure. Sadly, I must leave you here. Duty calls. I'll see you tomorrow at the Mama's Parade. Duty. Then she works for the Cardinal. Good to know. They reek of rotten fish. That small-time ruffian had the same stench about him. Maybe he was working for them. The Cardinal's soldier mentioned a gang prowling the harbor. If I found that hideout, I could recover my sure skin. Hmm. It's worth a try. Maybe it'll lead me to the gang's hideout. There's no lock. The door's been bolted from the inside. I'll beg you! I have children!
Who sent you after me? A woman hired us in the arbor. She wore an expensive Venetian mask, so I didn't see her face. But her voice seemed familiar. She was wearing white gloves and paid with silver. Have you heard anything about a vampire? It's what the noble folk call us. The have-nots. They say we suck the town and its fans dry. But it's been years since anyone's heard of any actual vampires. Do you know who I am? Inquisitor! The whole town's been talking about you! And yet you decided to come after me. A man can't say no to coin when he's got none to feed his children! Death must fall upon those who have raised their hand against the servant of God. For it is what Jesus vengeful teaches us to do to our tormentors. Strange coins. Underground entrances marked on it. Could be useful. There's nothing for me here. Time to look into the vampire case. I hope they've got good wine at the Frisky Mermaid. a Venetian mask. An expensive one. Half of them wear such masks, Master. Each prattling on about how her mask is special, but they all look the same to me. Guards. We've already sent for them, Master. 
What's everyone staring at? Get out of this, Gamble. It's not a sight for children. Give this to the owner of the Frisky Mermaid Inn. Tell him to prepare a room for me for the night. There's a silver angel in it for you if you do a good job. But if you rob me, I'll find you and burn you at the stake like a witch. first. Maybe someone saw something. Suckers are still around, are they? In Königstein? It can't be. Well, there's this one doctor. I heard there's none better at bloodletting. He'll put leeches on you to suck the disease right out. But he'll also drain your purse dry, the bloodsucker. Familiar face. Yes, it's Roxanne, a whore from Burgundy. I saw her around the inn. I even made use of her services a few times. She was good at her job. Half the town's humped that one. Aye, that it will. Folks say there's this special whore in town. A hermitite, Hermodite, something. She's got both a fanny and a prick. <laughs> so you and your old lady can ride her together. They say lines are forming to see her. That's how eager to fuck she is. from around here. I arrived only yesterday for the fair. Don't you know? Satan! It's his doing! He messes with people's heads. The way I see it, you're all 
fucking suspects. You, me, all of them. <laughs> Fuckers. Well, I found out quite a lot. Something stinks of piss here. Maybe someone was using the outhouse while the murder was being committed. It seems to be a piece of a cane. There's no blood on it. I wonder, could it be related to the case? Stinks like someone took a bath in the door. Don't hurt me, sir. So why did you run? Get up! You're coming with me. And don't try to run, or you'll feel my sword. Hey, you there! Get over here! Yes, Master? Where's Captain Bertram? Interrogating guests at the inn. Who's this bum? And how did he get his hands on a cardinal soldier's coat? I hope we'll find that out soon enough. Watch him. I must have words with your commander. I'm innocent, Master. Shut your mouth, you filthy bastard! No one's asking your opinion. Oh, Lord. Protect me from giving in to the sin of mercy. Scamps making arrangements for my room. Where were you at that time? Here, Carl can vouch for me. I, I, I was having a beer with him. It's true. It's true. Captain, forgive me, Master, but I don't have time right now. I know what happened. I saw the corpse. I came because I managed to detain a papa who was behaving suspiciously near the crime scene. Your men are guarding him outside. Off with you. He was wiping blood from this dagger. A strange blade. I've never seen any of its ilk. Nor have I. That is why we must approach this case with due diligence. Especially because the murder bears the marks of a ritualistic killing. Ritualistic? The victim's kidneys were removed. How horrid. That's not all. The suspect was wearing a coat like those worn by the Cardinal's soldiers. A pauper? How is that possible? I assure you that a thorough interrogation will help us determine the facts. I would like to conduct it personally, preferably in a place that's meant for such purpose. As you wish, Master. I shall lock the suspect in the dungeons. One more thing, Captain. I came to the defense of a lady named Liliana today. We were assaulted by robbers in an alley. 
The commander of his eminence's soldiers informed me about the incident. He failed to mention Liliana, though. Odd. Residents of Königstein know the girl serves the cardinal. They also know that his eminence doesn't tolerate attacks on his people. Attend to this pauper, Captain. I wish to talk to Master Matadine in private. Is something wrong with you? It's just garlic. My stomach doesn't agree with it, and the innkeeper uses rather excessive amounts of it. Ooh. Luckily, the wine provides a measure of relief. Sit down, please. I would like to talk about the task that brought you here, Master. Do you really believe there's a vampire hiding in town? It's absurd. There hasn't been a vampire attack recorded around here for nearly a century. I would know if it were otherwise. I assure you that I wouldn't have been dispatched to Königstein if there weren't grounds for it. Preposterous. I believe the Holy Office should look into a different matter. Strange events have been taking place here for some time now. Meaning? For years now, the town's been the setting for a dispute between the Cardinal, whom the have-nots hate, and the universally adored Countess Isabella. The Harlot's murder may be a part of that conflict, as could be the assault on Liliana. I have my suspicions, but no concrete proof. I know that the Cardinal keeps his secrets in an office that only his monks can access. I've also managed to ascertain that there's a secret chamber at the Countess's palace. My spies were not able to infiltrate it, but you, Master, you just might. Should you accomplish it, the truth would be revealed. What truth? As I have already said, all I have are suspicions, but the inn is not a good place to talk about this. These walls have ears. I must leave town today, so let us meet at the City Hall in two days' time. By then, you'll have become acquainted with the case. If you decide I'm right, I'll introduce you to my Persian and tell you everything I've managed to find out so far. Your Persian? Yes, my Persian. The only one I trust. What say you, Master? This is not why I came here. But all right. Perhaps we'll catch two birds with one stone. Excellent. I knew I could count on you. Your station as Inquisitor should guarantee your safety, but proceed cautiously nonetheless. Just in case, I'll announce that you're helping the Captain catch the Harlot's killer. It will explain your interest in the case. See you in two days, Master Matadine. Nothing is an accident. If God put the mayor in my path, then he suddenly had an important reason for it. Maybe that will lead me to the vampire. Did you do as I asked? Sure did. I'll be back in the morning to collect the silver angel you promised me. I'm happy to have you under my roof, Master. The servant girl will get your room ready. The first tolling of the bell. Time to go meet the Cardinal.
Estamos en breve contra el edificio en el que el diablo está presente. Master Matadine, I am pleased to make your acquaintance. I serve at your pleasure, your eminence. I see that you do not lack good manners and humility. They are praiseworthy virtues. One must know one's place in line. That is true. I receive notice of your coming to Königstein, the Holy Office and a letter. They spoke highly of you, and I see it was not idle praise. I am but a simple Inquisitor, striving to execute the Lord's will. Meek and modest. You surprise me, Master Matadin. I heard about the unfortunate incident with the bandits. I'm pleased my soldiers arrived in time. I presume you will not suffer any more unpleasantness. But God helps those who help themselves. I venture you don't carry Shurskin, or you would have used it. After all, there is no better weapon for fighting in the town's narrow alleys. Please accept this as a gift, then. You possess sure skin, Your Eminence. It was my belief that only Inquisitors were allowed to use it. Well, not only, as you can see. It was the Pope himself who gifted it to me years ago. I don't have much of it, but I will share what little I have with my brother in faith. Thank you, Your Eminence. Let me introduce you to my friend, Ingvar. Pleased to make your acquaintance, Master Inquisitor. I am Königstein's chief herbalist and medic. I am at your service, should you have need of me. For now, however, do satisfy the local custom and pick a card. We ask this of every person meeting his eminence for the first time. It is our way of verifying that they don't bear us any ill will. Verifying? In what way, exactly? I know what you're thinking, Master Matadine. But you are mistaken. It is not witchcraft. It is the deck of Saint Timirius, whose sepulcher can be found in the cathedral. I entrusted this artifact to the Venerable Ingvar. The cards reveal the truth about people. 
They're ordinary in appearance, but once a person reaches out for one, the image painted on it immediately changes to reveal their true nature. Try and see for yourself. Well, as long as they're the cards of a saint. Card Blanche. Intriguing. I must get back to the clinic. Until we meet again, Master Matadine. Soon, I hope. Damn beggars. Get rid of them. Let's go, Master Matadine. I will show you around the cathedral. The pleasant aroma of incense. How it differs from the stench of the street. I brought it here from the Holy Land. Does your eminence know anything about the vampire hiding in town? Regrettably, I cannot assist you in this matter. If I knew anything, I would have reported it to the Holy Office. I did hear the common folk in the harbor blabber about bloodsuckers, but I'm certain they were referring to the nobility. That is their name for us, isn't it? A harlot was murdered today to the Frisky Mermaid Inn. The manner in which the deed was done is reminiscent of a ritual, which is why the mayor asked for my help in capturing the perpetrator. A witness saw a suspicious person in a red coat, like those worn by your eminence's soldiers, did. If you are suggesting that one of my men did it, you are mistaken. They are good Christians. I am convinced of their innocence. The harlot must have gotten on someone's bad side. Likely a competitor whom she'd been poaching customers from. They, too, like to dun themselves in crimson. Defiling the cardinal colors. Has your eminence ever laid eyes on a dagger such as this? It was found at the scene of the crime. Sadly, I have not. But I will gladly take it and ascertain its origin. I am sorry, Your Eminence, but I cannot give it to you. It is the murder weapon that could have been used to perform a forbidden ritual. I will need it during my investigation. Does the name Reuchlin mean anything to you, Your Eminence? Johannes Reuchlin. Of course. He was the predecessor of our medic, the Venerable Ingvar. He died suddenly a year ago, so he couldn't have murdered the courtesan. There's much talk in town about the Countess. It was my impression that the common folk adore her. I heard rumors that your eminence has been in conflict with her. Isabella has been working to undermine my authority for many years. It wouldn't surprise me at all to learn that she was behind the harlot's murder. You should look into her dealings, Master Matadine. I know that Isabella has an interest in strange items, such as the dagger you found at the crime scene. Who knows? Maybe she uses them to perform pagan rites. You said yourself that the murder was ritualistic. Will your eminence allow me to avail myself of the library's resources? Sometimes the matters that come to light in the course of an investigation merit a thorough analysis. Naturally. 
I shall instruct the monks to give you access to anything you need. Will you stay for mass, Master? Apologies, Your Eminence, but we Inquisitors prefer to pray in silence and solitude. It is how God allows us to see the truth. Yes, I heard about that. We simple clergymen should learn that from you. Where then do you plan on praying today? In the town dungeons. Before I do, however, I shall interrogate the suspect who's been detained in the crime scene. I won't keep you from your duties then, Master. Are you teaching him commands? He already knows all of them. He's very smart. Once he comes back, say give it. You'll obey, you'll see. Give it. Where did you find this? In an alley near the inn. Friend sniffed it out. He likes playing with it. It looks like the broken off head of a cane. Could it be the missing element of the piece I found in the murdered harlot? It's like a glove. It's possible that the murderer used the cane to stun the harlot. It would be worthwhile to find its owner. Can I keep this? Sure. As long as you give friends something similar to replace it. Are you going to the inn? No. I have to stop by the dungeons first. I go there a lot. The innkeeper gives me food to bring to the executioner, and I get a hot meal in return. I'm going there tonight too, but a bit later. Come on, I'll show you the way. I know the best shortcut.
to, Inquisitor. Come here. I will never pay you for all these favors, Skim. This one is for free. Thank you for not ripping me off. Quickly, Inquisitor. I don't have all day. What else are you gonna do? I'm a very busy person. No doubt. Well then, after you. Thanks, Scamp. I'll manage on my own from here. Welcome, Master Inquisitor. In which cell is the prostitute's murder suspect being held? You'll have to ask Executioner Roland. He's in charge around here. You'll likely find him in the torture chamber. Fear. Blood, excrement, and death. All dungeons stink the same. By the Lord's sword, Roland put on the costume of the Merry Executioner. He even put on the mask. Mortimer is stopping by. The costume's sure to catch his eye. I put it on. I climbed inside. But my true nature I won't hide. All I wanted was to see what the Tiananmen man had felt when at dawn he donned this pelt. Now I know of his past glory. Cause the mask told me the story. The reason for his state of Mary was the mask he kept on wearing. It puts rhymes right in your noggin. Gives ideas about some flogging. How to make your victim hurt. Where to poke to make him squirt. You'll be having so much fun, you won't even miss the sun. Wait a moment, wait a... Spell. Something brought him to this hell. If you're here to spill some guts, I might go a little nuts. <laughs> this right here is my domain. I decide who brings the pain. He's rhyming like the Merry Executioner. Has he gone mad? Or is he just pretending?
I'm only here to interrogate the prisoner, Master Roland. Calls us master! Such elation! Sits to watch in admiration! How a man of unmatched skill makes the convict promptly spill! Stay yourself, Master Roland. I don't believe torture is necessary. Yeah, I'll go off to scoff and snort, since you took away my sport. Did you kill the courtesan? Tell the truth. Remember that Inquisitors can tell if someone is lying. I, I didn't do it, sir. I, I swear. Ha! They all swear right from the start. But then, they have a change of heart. Where did you get the coat and the dagger? Some woman threw them away, I swear. First, she got rid of the dagger, and shortly after, the coat. I, I was in the outhouse and saw everything through a hole in the door. The only thing I didn't see was her face. I, I put on the coat because it still gets chilly during the evenings. A and I took the dagger to sell to the Countess. She likes strange items like this. She sends her servant girls to the harbor to fetch them for her. Usually the dark-skinned one, uh, Nontel. Her girls are easy to make out because they wear silver necklaces, each with a purple stone in them. It's how merchants know to serve them first. Did you know the murdered harlot? No, sir. I only saw her a few times soliciting customers in the street. The cursed harlot would undress without shame. They're all the same. One day they'll be our doom, damned bitches! Because of them, our fate will be that of Adam in paradise! You lie! Tell me what really happened, or I'll give you to the executioner. Be quiet now. We'll get to talking. I can't wait to come a-knocking. I'm telling the truth, and I swear! I don't think he's lying, but it's worth double-checking anyway in the homeworld. Take me to an empty cell, Master Roland. I shall reflect on this wretch's words by devoting myself to prayer. I'll take you where you wish, my lord. A peaceful cell to hang your sword. Come, Inquisitor! Hear my sweet! I've a place to rest your feet. Pray as long as you desire. Your companion here's expired. We have a comedian. Is there no other cell? I have victims beyond measure. There's no place to suit your pleasure. So be it then. I shall pray in here. Meanwhile, try to press as much as you can from the prisoner. Off I go! Off I scamper! <sighs> My unmentionables could not be damper. Luckily, this one doesn't stink yet. Our father, what our king. Bereave us of our weakness, lest we forgive those who trespass against us. Draw our evil from darkness, so we may vanquish in thy name. Amen.
wayward woman. It's all bloody. God, I'm merciful. What have I done? What is this? Oh, God! Wayward woman, where's the dagger? What have you done with it? Mortimer, while to God you have been praying all this time, I have been playing. Christ merciless. You cry God because it's crooked. I didn't beg you for an estate. The two of us, my tools in tow, would surely do a better show. As it is, you see quite plain. I failed to split the chap in twain. Have you gone mad, Executioner? Why did you kill him? 
Well, you did tell me to press. First, I drilled a little bore. Didn't work. So, I made more. You were supposed to press information from him, not innards. It is nothing but semantics, turning words to funny antics. You, sir, should have been more clear. The pauper was innocent. You're not pleased with the results. I do admit to certain faults. Before long, I will do better. When you see it, you will cheer, knowing that I have no peer. He doesn't care about what he's done in the slightest, and he keeps rhyming. He's either gone mad, or... by the nails and thorns. When I first came here, Roland said that the Merry Executioner's mask was putting ideas and rhymes in his head. Could it be cursed? There's only one way to find out. Want to strip me of my mask? That won't be an easy task. Catch me first, dear Mortimer. Although, I do believe you'll err. Thank you. 
Where are you? It's me, Amelia. The girls brought me my repast. I must thank her for this deed. I'll teach her what it is to bleed. First, I'll lock her in a cell to enjoy a dead man's smell. Where's he gone? I don't know. All he said was that he must prepare his table and tools. Then he disappeared. Release me! The scoundrel wants to steal the girl. Plotting mischief, I can tell. If he <coughs> needs to cause me trouble, I'll just have
What the hell? Let go! No! Let me out of here! I... Guilty! Guilty! That I know! Hurry up! <laughs> Cheerful disposition. So now it's time for it. By the Lord's sword, he's barricaded himself from the inside. I have to talk to the guard captain. Maybe his men will be able to remove the mask from the executioner's face. Where's your captain? I need to speak to him. Right now, um, he should be at the inn. Let's go. I'll walk you home. I don't have a home. Where do you live then? Here and there. There are many places in town to spend the night safely. Where do you get the money for clothes and food? All over. I do odd jobs. Sometimes I'll find something or get something from someone. And sometimes you'll steal something, eh? Sometimes. Life on the street isn't easy. I'm not one to complain. I'm not the only foundling in the world, you know. Others are worse off. <laughs> You're quite the little scamp, aren't you? I know it's not easy for you. I was an orphan, too. I turn here. See you later, Inquisitor. See you later, scamp. I have your room ready and waiting upstairs, Master Inquisitor. Pour us two ales, Innkeeper. I'm paying. I interrogated the pauper in the dungeons. He proved to have been innocent. Did you release him? I didn't make it in time. Executioner split him in half. <laughs> Excuse me, what? Wearing an odd mask. I feared there's a curse on it that pushed him to do it. I wanted to get it off his face, but the devil barricaded himself in the dungeons. Mind sending your men? I'll get to it, but only after tomorrow's mummer's parade. All sorts of cranks have come to town for it. They're all drinking and brawling. I have to maintain order, but I don't have enough men. Fine. One more day won't hurt. Thank you for treating me, Captain. Next time I'm buying.
wake up, Inquisitor? Wake up, Inquisitor? Oh. Oh, what do you want, Scam? The silver angel you promised me? You couldn't wait until I was awake. But you are awake. Ugh. And I was starting to like you. Catch. The innkeeper said to tell you that he's made you a meal. Tell him I'll be right down. Welcome, Master Inquisitor. You slept well, I trust. Not bad. Isn't that a Munich-made dagger used by the Landsconnects? I see you know your arms, Master. It is a memento from my time in the Emperor's army. It never leaves my side. Sit at the table. I shall bring your food. The wife made you some pear stuffed pike. Smells exquisite. Do you need anything else? Information. Did you know Johannes Reuchlin? Of course. He was a regular here. He usually sat alone in the corner with a jug of the cheapest wine. Folks called him a penny pincher. Rightly so, I think, as he never tipped me. seen a dagger such as this no my lord many travelers stay here I've seen many a weapon but none such as this it seems old ask the brothers Finkelstein about it. they're triplets that trade in antiques at the harbor where they've got a warehouse you won't have trouble picking them out as they quarrel constantly what can you tell me about this coin looks to be a widow's penny. They used to be minted in Königstein a long time ago, before the line appeared on the town's coat of arms. It was one of these coins that gave us the remains of St. Terentius Rufus. I never saw anyone pay with them. What else do you know about Reuchlin? He was friendly with the Cardinal. He also spent a lot of time with his student, Ingvar who took over his duties. Spent a few years in Kievan Rus. Supposedly he was doing research there that's forbidden in the Empire, but I don't know how much truth there is to that. He was a good medic. People knew and valued him, but nobody came to the funeral. Ingvar suspected that Reuchlin had died of an infectious disease. He feared that the plague would spread around town, which is why only a few monks took part in the ceremony. Have you heard anything about a vampire? You mean there's a vampire in Königstein? Christ, unmerciful. Protect us with your sword. Thank you, Innkeeper. You were very helpful. I have yet to learn anything about the vampire. The cursed bloodsucker must have hidden itself well. It surely knows I'm looking for it by now. I should stop asking around. Once the beast feels more secure, it'll drop its guard and make a mistake. Then, it's mine. Little thief. You won't get away from me again, stinker. Ray, to the merciless...
the little ship with the red hot iron. Maybe that'll teach him not to steal. Or return the pouch to the moon. As you wish, master. Well, lad, we're about to fry your cheeks. This is yours, Venerable Father. I don't know how to thank you, Master Inquisitor. This is all I have in this world. You don't look like a member of the local order. That is true, for I am not. I am Lothar, one of the seekers of truth in divine revelations. We are a small and poor congregation. There are but a few of us in the whole empire. What brings you to Königstein? The local library and its bountiful book collection. I will spend the next few days there. Should you need any help, that's where to find me. It's an African aphrodisiac. Three drops are enough to make your old man a stallion. My old man could use an entire jug. Who's selling it? The brothers Finkelstein. And triplets that argue all the time. Yep. They've a warehouse at the end of the pier. Can't be pulling those tricks with us. We don't haggle. Perhaps we can make an exception for our esteemed customer. You must abide by your principles, dear brother. No exceptions. What are you playing at? Good merchant, bad merchant. You think I don't know this trick? Besides, I'm not buying anything anyway. I have no money. Then what are you bagging us for? Fuck off! Calm down, brother, or you'll bring on a fit. We heard about the fells they found in the old forest. Them two that got torn apart by wolves? They say there's barely anything left of them. Tis their own fault. If they didn't go that way at night, they'd still live, I'd wager.
You lost a bet, son, pay up. I lost? More like he did. Uh, kindly leave me the fuck out of this. I took no part in this idiotic game. Pay up, for fuck's sake. Heard that? Pay him. Fuck you. Yeah, can't a man think? How do you intend to deliberate? And why are you in such a rush? Yeah, can't a man think? Your thinking won't put bread on my table. The customer is always right, churl. Take these words to heart. That's right, and never forget them. And now, let us think. Like triplets, but it's them, all right. Shut your traps. We've got a customer. How can we be of service, Master Inquisitor? They say you're experts on antiques. Tis all we trade in, Master. We are but humble merchants. Can you tell me anything about this dagger? Blades like these were used by the guardsmen who fell at the side of Emperor Valens in the Battle of Adrianople. The Visigoths traded their weapons to the Persians. It's likely Vikings who brought it to the north of the continent. The fuck are you on about? What guardsmen? What Vikings? It's clearly an athame. A ceremonial dagger used by the Kievan Rus's witches. Very old, to be sure. In my opinion, it belonged to the Dulabees. It probably made its way here as a spoil of war. <laughs> you don't know anything, lamb chops. Anathema should have a black hilt. And this dagger doesn't have one. It's a Crimean blade. Probably used by their medics to draw blood. Do you know whose cane this is? Sure. It belonged to the old medic, Johannes Reuchlin. He never parted with it. Right. I sold it to him myself. For a pittance? You should have asked for more. Anyone ask your opinion? You'd better admit that you lost the bet. That's right. Hand over Both the coin. Both of you can kiss my ass. Pleasures must be earned. Hmm. It may be a false lead. Reuchlin is dead. So he suddenly couldn't have bludgeoned the harlot. The innkeeper claimed that the old man was a frequent guest at the inn. If he broke the cane somewhere nearby, he might have tossed it away there. On the other hand, Reuchlin's cane might have changed owners after his death. Tis nice to see you again, fair Montel. The Countess's trusted servant. She's wearing the necklace with the purple stone that the Papa mentioned. I believe I saw one like it in my vision and in the own world. Spare me the pleasantries. I am not impressed by courtship. I am interested only in your merchandise. As ever, beautiful, cold, and blunt. Sadly, we have nothing new. Our ship hasn't yet come to harbor. What about this dagger? It looks interesting. I'm sure the Countess would like it. I'm sorry, but it is not for sale. However, I would be honored if the Countess would meet with me. Well, well. The Inquisitor. The town bustles with rumors about you. The Countess has been very busy of late, but I'm sure she will not refuse an emissary of the Holy Office. Expect a messenger with a note. Master Matterdee. Lovely lady, isn't she? All right then. We had us a chat, but did no business. Care to buy something, Master? That's right, Inquisitor. Have a look at our wares. What is this? Truthfully, we don't know. The sea threw it ashore. Cheap imitation. A 
treatise on fencing. Shame is not a work on ancient weapons. Wait a minute. I have an entire library at my disposal. Maybe I'll learn something about the dagger there. I knew he wouldn't buy any. Some profit you are. didn't waste any time. They were quick to dole out the punishment. Stinker. Our paths have crossed again. Certainly for a reason. Let's see where he's Pray going. To the merciless divine mother.
Hello, Master Matadine. I am Brother Marrow, the librarian. I was told that you might stop by. Uh, what can I help you with? I'm looking for a treatise on ancient weapons. I'm sorry, Master, uh, but you will find no such book here. We do not deal in matters of the military or arms. They are the domain of other orders. Where do these stairs lead? To the Cardinal's office and chambers, in which we keep priceless books and scrolls. Some of them, written by the Apostles themselves. You keep such precious relics here. Why aren't they guarded? Oh, but they are. We have two excellent guards. The first one is the lock on the doors to this library, as it was fashioned by a master of his craft. Those doors will not open without a special key. The second is his eminence's hands. Hands? Sounds mysterious. Exactly as it is meant to sound, Master Matady. Could I take a look in there? Of course. As long as the Cardinal agrees to it. Might I look over the book collection? Of course. A messenger from the Countess has a message for you, Master Matadine. He's waiting by the entrance. How did he find me here? <laughs> Tis a small town. Hello, Master Inquisitor. The Countess has invited you to her palace. When? Immediately. Tell her that I'll arrive shortly. Leaving already, Master? I shall return soon. The doors of the library remain open to you. I won't close them until the second toll of the bells calling for Vespers. Inquisitor! <laughs> it's nice to see you again. Hi, Scam. What brings you here? Nothing. Wandering the town aimlessly. And you? Where are you off to? <sighs> you need to know everything, huh? 
I'm going to the Countess's palace. There is a shortcut there. Here at last, Inquisitor. Follow me. You took your time getting here, making us wait. I didn't know I was supposed to hurry. <sighs> your arrogance will one day be your undoing, Inquisitor. Does that worry you? Quite the contrary. I get the feeling that you are not fond of me. How did you figure that out? Well, I have a few talents. I wonder what they are. One of them would please you greatly. I don't think so. Wait here. I'll notify the Countess of your arrival. I doubt you'll be interested in the displays gathered in the palace, but have a look at them if you'd like. A piece of the Pataboom. Interesting. I thought all pieces of the Broken Cross were kept at the Vatican. Andrew's armor. Legend says that Quintus Sutorius Macro broke his sword on it. This is Peter's sword. The blade used by the first apostle to cut off Malchus's ear in the olive grove. It hasn't lost its edge. Silver pieces of purification. It was with them that Judas redeemed his sins. And what is that? Amazing. These are the blueprints for St. Peter's lockpicks. Supposedly, they could open any lock. The Wailing Maidens, whom 
Jesus met on his way to Golgotha. St. Damien the Thinker. Hello, Master Matterdeen. Countess? Let us walk in the garden. I've heard many good things about you, Master Matterdeen. It is said you are the pride of the Holy Office. Educated, intelligent, and ruthless. Did I leave anything out? I am an inquisitor, my lady. I do not feed on flattery. So you're direct as well. Let us get to the point then. You supposedly inquired of the brothers Finkelstein about a certain dagger. Might I have a look at it? Of course. Can you tell me anything about it, my lady? Many things. It is a Pugio, a dagger used by Roman legionaries. It is at least 1,500 years old and belongs to me, although it never made its way into my hands. I don't understand. A certain merchant imported it for me. Unfortunately, Nantil was not able to collect it. The merchant, in good faith, gave the dagger to a woman wearing the necklace of my missing servant. My lady, are you suggesting that someone impersonated your servant to acquire the dagger? A Pugio is not worth much. I believe this person wanted to hurt me. They collected the dagger from the merchant and then threw it away, which is why you found it. Ultimately, however, the blade found its rightful owner. Give it to me, please. Sadly, I cannot return it to you, Countess. The dagger was used to perform a bloody ritual. It constitutes evidence of a crime. I must keep it until the investigation is over. Yes, I heard about the poor girl found near the inn. My lady, do you have any idea as to who might have killed the harlot? Sadly, I don't. I imagine the Cardinal tried to accuse me of this crime. I hope that you didn't pay it any mind, Master. I've been helping the least fortunate for years. Thus, the claim that I murdered a poor Jezebel on a whim is an insult to my dignity. What is your opinion of the Cardinal, Countess? His eminence is a leech, possessed by a lust for wealth. He's poisoning the town instead of healing it. Beware of him, Inquisitor, as he can be cruel and soulless. His beliefs border on heresy. He thinks that humankind is inherently evil and hence deserves annihilation. That is a serious accusation, Countess. Can you support it with evidence? Sadly, I can't. The Cardinal said it to me many years ago in a private conversation. Do go to his office, though. I'm sure His Eminence's private correspondence will confirm my words. Easier said than done. Follow the example set by our Lord, Master Matterdeen. Ability is born from desire. My lady, I noticed that you have an interest in antiquity. 
Undoubtedly, yes. Is that a passion of yours? More like my life's purpose. I am a devout follower of Christ's teachings, so I study them in every way I can. I don't understand. You study the mysteries of faith by collecting old sculptures and paintings. How does that work? It's simple, really. By surrounding myself with items that may have been in the presence of our Lord, it is as if I am communing with our Lord himself. Would you be willing to tell me the name of the merchant who imported the Puvio for you? I'd like to talk to him. I'm sorry, Master Matadine, but I cannot do this. I promised him discretion. I understand. I'm glad to hear that. My lady, have you heard anything about a vampire lurking in the town? I know nothing about that. I've only heard that you're looking for it. You'll find answers to many of your questions in the Cardinal's office, Master Metadine. I know it's not an easy place to infiltrate. Nevertheless, you should try. For all our sakes. My lady, the guests have arrived. Farewell, Inquisitor. I hope we meet again. And I hope we don't. The exit is over there, Inquisitor. What a mess. The Cardinal accuses the Countess, who accuses the Cardinal, and the Mayor accuses them both. I wonder how much truth there is to what Isabella said about his eminence's office. I'm tempted to find out. I could try to gain access after the library is closed. Second toll of the bells. Brother Marold is closing the library. If I'm to go inside, I have to steal the keys from him. People monks should know where Brother Merrill is. I will try to listen to their conversations discreetly. Breath away after mass? Sure. Ah, I'm broke. Spent all my money there yesterday. You can always watch. You'd be a bouncing rumps, like hell. You'll be missing ill. Hasty Greta promised to dress as the Cairn. Why didn't you start with that? 
Where are we going? your day. Oh, don't ask. I've been walking around town since calling on the rabble to pray. I can't feel my legs, and this bloody bell has given me a splitting headache. At least you got to walk around. I was stuck standing by the library stairs like Simeon Stylites. It can't go on like this. Where is Brother Marold? It's high time we talked to him about this. I don't know. We should ask Sven. He's Marold's new ass-kisser. Sven? Which one is he? He is just now speaking to Brother Lothar of the Seekers of Truth in Divine Revelations. Did Venerable Jurga really poison the book? Yes. Many brothers died because of it. Why did he do it? He wanted to punish those who read it, despite the prescription. How did Brother William discover it? He used Occam's razor. Meaning what? He slipped Brother Yorga's throat? I don't know. I don't know the details. It looks like Brother Sven knows where I'll find Merald. But where is Sven? Rifling through books can become tiresome. God's word will clear your mind. Today, Brother Merrill will preach it at the cathedral. The Pope himself has praised his charisma. Yes, I've heard of him, and I'll gladly attend. Let us go then. Gloria and excelsis Won't do me any harm to listen to God's word too. Celestis, Deus Pater Omnipotens, Domine Fili Unigenite, Jesu Christe, Domine Deus Filius Patris, Qui destruis inimicos tuos, misirego nobis, Qui destruis inimicos tuos, Suscipe tetricationem nostrum. I steal the keys and return them before he the Sierra. Must hurry. Quoniam tu solus tu Descended from the cross, the Lord spoke justly. Blinded by your greatness, you dare wander. This we ask of you. Hear us, O Lord. Let us pray for abundance. No, I just need to find the key. This we ask of you. Hear us, O Lord. Let us pray for the parents that they may raise their children as vengeful and power hungry Christians. We are you. Let us pray for our parents, but they will not share us. Pray for the Pope that he follows the Lord's example and keeps us firm. This we ask. 
hands. Hmm. Must be a cipher lock. Vault. Yes, God willed it so. Two tolls of the bell. Time's running out. Shilas revealed the formula for Shurskin to the Cardinal. My superiors will surely find this interesting. The traitor will pay with his head, provided the formula is genuine.
moment of truth. Well, I'll be. It really is Shurskin. So the Cardinal lied to me. He didn't get the Shurskin from the Pope. He's making it himself. I wonder who else lied to me. There's only one way to find out. Our Father, who art our King, bereave us of our weakness, lest we forgive those who trespass against us. Draw out evil from darkness, so we may vanquish in thy name. Amen.
What good is a chess set to a blind man?
two threes. Not even a child would buy that story about the dagger you told the Inquisitor. And the one you told him was better, eh? Four fives. Fucker. Mine was the only one with any credibility to it. Yours were only good for ass wiping. The important thing is, we completed the task we were paid good money for. Ha ha ha! A single two. I was afraid Nontor would tell him something. She doesn't know anything. Besides, she wouldn't have said a word without the Countess's say so. Three sixes. Think he's as sharp as they say. Sharper than you, that's for sure. Fuck. Just a pair of ones. I hear he fights well. He wouldn't be a match for us. Ah, five balls. The commander of the Cardinal's soldiers said he drew a blank card from the deck of St. Temerius. What's the meaning of that? And what's the meaning of the three kings that the Cardinal, Ingvar, and Reuchlin drew a few years ago? There's no meaning, you dopes. They didn't become kings, did they? Four twos. Fuck the lot of them. Three threes. Shame you didn't strike a deal with the blind man. I would have sold him that chess set if not for the snotty girl that came with him. Little shit immediately saw that the pools were damaged. What good is a chess set to a blind man? Who cares? Who won? Nobody. Each of us has 63 points. Impossible. You cheated, imp. It's always the same with you lot. Fuck the both of you. Sword. Mass is over. Time to go. A 
red coat. Let's see where this tunnel leads. Oh, no sign of the red coat. The Mama's parade has begun. The revelries are in full swing. been looking everywhere for you. Come, my king. Let the revelries begin. I hope the innkeeper prepared something to eat. I am ravenous after yesterday's revelries. Where is everybody? Empty. the spot. It's high time I had words with the brothers Finkel. Stein. It is a bad omen. Satan's work. And a harbinger of coming calamities. It's just a cloud. Nothing more. I know of what I speak. We'll all end up like the innkeeper. End up? You haven't heard. Someone cut off the poor man's head. What? Where? There. Behind the stables. They killed my beloved husband. Hello, Master Matterdeen. I'm guessing you already know what happened. Bad news always travels quickly. Get her out of here. 
They killed him. They killed my beloved husband. <laughs> You found a body. A farmhand working the stables. Have you questioned the locals? Nobody saw anything. But I'm positive that the innkeeper was killed somewhere else. The body was moved here afterwards. Indeed. He was beheaded and gutted like a hog. There are no traces of blood. Farmhand. He's still green. Probably still shaking with fear. The sheath is missing its dagger. The innkeeper claimed it never left his side. Did you search the area? We did. Didn't find anything, though. How do you know that? I studied anatomy at the Academy of the Inquisitorium. The harlot was also disemboweled. Do you think the same degenerate murdered the innkeeper? It's possible. Captain! What are you doing here? You should be standing guard by the dungeons. Speak, man! What happened? The hagman's lost his mind! He killed everyone! What do you mean, everyone? Speak more clearly. The guards you sent, they wanted to take off his mask, and he slaughtered them. All six. He did what? Soon after they came, the merchant's son arrived. The merchant that Master Inquisitor ordered to be locked up in the dungeons. The boy said the hangman would kill his father, because the witch they'd burn at the stake cast some sort of curse on his mask. And? What did you do? What were we supposed to do? He was talking nonsense, so we smacked him. Then we unlocked the entrance to the dungeons, and the boys went in to get that bloody mask. A moment later, I heard their screams. I've no words to describe it. Did you see the bodies? No. I dared not go inside. So, perhaps they're still alive. If it's truly magic, Master Matterdeen, then I must ask for your aid. My men's efforts will be for naught against magic. Only you can handle such a threat. Follow my man into the dungeons. I will follow shortly with all the guards I can muster. Let's go, master. Let's go, master. <laughs> what is this stench? Forgive me, master. All this has made me shit myself. Have you seen the cloud, Master? The one that appeared in the sky come morning? It's hard to miss. It looks like a demon straight from hell. More like a peculiar natural phenomenon. I don't know. 
Some say it's Satan's doing. Old Crone said not to look at it for too long, because it might mess with your head, make you do something evil. Idle prat. And what if it's true? Maybe the hangman went mad because he stared at this damn cloud for too long. Maybe he's the one who killed the enemy. And then returned to the dungeons, and, still under the cloud's spell, did away with me comrades. Stop talking rubbish, fool. In fact, let's stop talking at all. Yes, Master. Are you gonna save my father, Master? I will do what I can. We didn't tell you everything. The witch we took the mask and outfit from, she cast a curse before she died. Do you remember what she said? She screamed from the flames that the Jester's mask would turn all who wear it mad, and that my father would die by a merry executioner's hand. But come morning, I heard about Roland's madness. It was then I understood that the curse was real. What must I do to break the curse? Which must have said, else the curse wouldn't take hold. I don't know. I swear. All saints be damned. Let's go. Maybe we'll manage to save someone. <laughs> No, no, no. I'm not going in there. You took a vow, remember? I'll piss on that vow. Damned coward. Fine. I'll go alone. The shit for brains like you would be useless to me anyway. This throw, my victory hangs. Victory is mine! <laughs> but what now? <laughs> Quiet is my purgatory. None are here to praise my glory. But act I must. I shan't be idle. Merchant Guts will be my bride. That mask must come off. But how to do it? Sneak up on him, or lay our cards on the table. Ha 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 ha! 
Inquisitor. Your strength alone is not enough to seize my The curse cast by the witch must have been powerful. Otherwise, the mask wouldn't have taken hold of the executioner's mind. I wonder... How can it be broken? The merchant's son claimed not to know. All others who might have known are dead. The Unwalled is my only option. The executioner's flute. There's no magic in it, but I didn't sense any in the mask either.
mask makes all who wear it so. Rights are right, or wrongs are wrong. Muscles bursting at the seams, but there's nothing there. For to wear it is to die. Hear my curse, my final cry.
What's going on? What am I doing here? Remember me, Knave. By the nails and thorns. It's you! I told you we'd meet again. Impossible! You're dead! I burned you at the stake! Be gone, foul spirit! Be gone! I will go. Once the curse is carried out. <laughs> what? What curse? Your boy didn't tell you? <laughs> Odd. I'm sure he heard it. Don't worry. The hangman will introduce you to it shortly. Now this poem must be spoken. Lest it leaves me dead and broken. Listen then, for it's important. He who dons this mask of jesters is bound to see his madness fester. He will snicker, rhyme, and cheer, dancing, prancing, full of cheer. He will even play the flute. Quite a spirited pursuit. The mask makes all who wear it strong. Rights are right, or wrongs are wrong. Muscles bursting at the seams, but there's nothing there but dreams. For to wear it is to die. Hear my curse, my final cry. You as well will feel its hold. Lo, your punishment foretold by your merry hangman friend. With legs cut off, your life will end. How to change this dreadful plight? Plea with God. Beseech his might. For only when his grace is gifted can this curse be ever lifted. Wait! Wait! Wasn't I the main attraction? Time to move from words to action. It's over. The executioner is dead. What of my men? Slaughtered. Damn! Witches and their spells! Damn them to hell! By the Lord's wrath! What is that stench? It's your man. He didn't help me, though I asked him to. He stood here the entire time, in soiled britches. He should be taught a lesson. Since he shit himself, he'll be shoveling shit in the town latrines for the next year. He'll start by scrubbing the dungeons clean to gain experience. What of my father? How is he? I'm sorry, lad. The executioner quartered him. Quartered him?
What the fuck? Has he gone mad? My prayers have finally been answered. Stupid daddy won't ordering me around anymore. He can throw his stinking bones to the dogs. I shit on them! Little fucker. Marcellus Mary! They'll tear out his throat! It is God's will. He's gone. Why did you let it happen, Inquisitor? Animals are driven by instinct, which is the foundation for the divine law of nature. Man should not go against it. I don't understand. Friend's not aggressive. It's not his fault, Scam. He just felt the holy call of blood. It wouldn't have happened if the merchant's boy hadn't tormented him. Oh, so that's how it was. The dog paid the brat back in kind. Well, I'd be lying if I said I felt sorry for the lout. Are you feeling all right, Master Matterdeen? You don't look well. I'm fine, just tired. I have something that will pick you right up. Take a swing. What is this? The Devil's Vintage from the Polish Kingdom. It burns your throat, but it'll get your blood pumping all right. You just need to drink it in moderation, lest enthusiasm triumph over reason. Oh, oh strong stuff. <laughs> Tis good, though. You'll feel it shortly. I shall leave you here. If you don't mind. I must have words with the brothers Finkelstein. Go, go. I have no further need of you here. And beware of the triplets. Greedy bastards can be treacherous. Yes. I have already experienced that. Off with you, little girl. There's nothing for you here. Come on, friend. Let's go. You two. Bring a corpse cart. The rest of you, follow me. Where are the brothers? How should I know, my lord? They probably fucked off somewhere. You sure you don't know? Think hard. Maybe they said something. Y yes, yes. It's coming back to me now. 
They went to the Take Your Breath Away whorehouse. They took some brat with them. They took a brat to a whorehouse? It was probably about some major deal. The brothers always talk business there. I know where it is. Have you been following me, Scam? It's a small town, Inquisitor. Yes. I've heard that before. I'll take you to the brothel for one silver angel. <laughs> so be it. Let's go. I'm curious. What do you spend the money on? You've coaxed quite a lot out of me. I don't waste it, if that's what you're asking. So, what is it you do with it? I help those in need. Very commendable, but naive. Why? Because you can't help everybody. But I can help some. Afraid? They look odd, but so far, they're just clouds. That's right. Let's go, Inquisitor. We're wasting time. What is Satan's doing? I heard that people started disappearing from the harbor. You think it's got something to do with these clouds? Definitely. Mother of God, watch over us. Hasty Greta is going with me. <laughs> the fuck she is! You had her last time! It's my turn now. <laughs> Don't argue! Let the ladies decide for themselves. The fuck are you then? Uncle Good Advice? Yeah! You're not choosing today, so shut your trap! Well, well. The Inquisitor. We were just talking about you. You've played me for a fool. You knew where the dagger I asked you about came from. Yet you still conceal the truth. Nothing is free in this world, Master Medellin. Inquisitors don't pay for information. They ask questions and sooner or later, they get answers. Well, you won't be getting any answers from us. There isn't enough room here for long weapons. I'll handle this. Wait outside with the girls. I'll join you in a minute.
Ratso got done quick. Matilda dragged her husband to the lips of infidelity. And? I reckon the cat's out the bag now. How do you know he was cheating on her? Because he was doing it with me. With you, too? These damn clouds are giving me goose flesh. Then stop staring at them already, huh? I can't. My head keeps tilting up on its own. Satan must have possessed you. Quick, spit over your left shoulder. Will that help? Certainly about it. Did you see that? 
Fucking Finkelstein nearly knocked me down. He ran like the devil was chasing him. More like someone he cuckolded. Half the town wants him for that. Right. He was wounded, so there must have been a duel. Must have been some bruiser. After all, Jonas is a fencing expert. Kick enough rocks and you'll find a scorpion. Finkelstein is hiding out here somewhere. I feel close. Go down, son, before it's too late. I'm not your son. You killed the only person who could call me that. Don't forget God, boy. He is a father to us all. Christ said... He said that the right to vengeance is sacred. I was reminded of that by one of the brothers Finkelstein this morning, when I was paying them to slit your throat. So the salesman was talking about you. What made you choose them of all people? The triplets used to be the best assassins around. Sadly, they've gone senile. And the money? How did you get it? My father had plenty. It appears it was not a wise investment. Do you know why? Because Inquisitors are protected by God himself. Bullshit! I'm about to watch you die. Many have spoken these words to me. They're all dead now. Stop! I'll kill you if you don't stop! Enough of this. Give me the crossbow. Ah! Blast it! I sank to the bottom.
Where am I? Calm down. I'll explain everything soon. You're sitting in an inquisitorial chair. It's a marvelous invention. It gives encouragement and motivation to those unwilling to speak. See this crank? Once I start turning it, iron spikes will slowly begin to protrude from the holes in the seat. They're very sharp. The more I turn the crank, the further they'll extend. First, they'll pierce your clothes and your skin. Then, they'll go through your guts and your balls. They won't stop until they come out the other side. Of course, I will take my time. I'll use the Inquisitor's medley. It's the most effective method for conducting an interrogation. Question, pain. Question, pain. Question, pain. It proceeds as such, methodically and without emotion, until the desired result is achieved. So, do you still claim I won't learn anything from you? Go get donkey fucked, Inquisitor! I was hoping you'd say that. One of three blades! We found it in the far north, in the ruins of an ancient city! Countess! She was supposed to get the dagger too, but someone... someone impersonated her servant girl.
Hi, friend. How did you find yourself here, Inquisitor? I'm looking for Johannes Reuchlin's grave. What about you? What brings you to the graveyard? I like this place. Maybe it's silly, but sometimes when I sit here, I close my eyes and imagine talking to my parents. They're buried somewhere around here, in an unmarked mass grave. You know, I'm slowly beginning to forget what they looked like. The important thing is that they're here, Scamp. In your heart. I have to be going now. Roiklin was buried in that part of the graveyard. Let's go, friend. escape. Destiny. Reuchlin. This is the grave for my vision. Fresh blood. Broken tombstone. Interesting. Looks like the oil lamp I saw in the innkeeper's hand during the vision. Withered flowers. They were most likely knocked down during the struggle. One silver angel. Innkeepers or murderers? inside the grave. Reuchlin's corpse? I don't understand any of this anymore. What's the significance of that damn grave? It must be important if Jesus keeps showing it to me in visions. The Unworld. I'd rather not go there. But it's the only place where I'll learn the truth.
hope the Unwalled doesn't turn me into one of these skulls. Our father, what our king, bereaves of our weakness, lest we forgive those who trespass against us. Draw our evil from darkness, so we may have vanquished in thy name. Another one? So quickly!
So he did sniff something out. Well, he won't learn much if he slaughters. He doesn't know who delivered it. The innkeeper didn't say where he was going. He just left, saying he'd be back soon.
he dragged an unconscious Jonas to the dungeons. Speak. The innkeeper's wife claims that her husband received a message from you, my lady. She doesn't know who delivered it. The innkeeper didn't say where he was going either. He just left, saying he'd be back soon. So I was right. The necklace thief impersonated my servant again. The innkeeper wouldn't have trusted anyone else. The last person to see him was Amelia, the little one running all over the place. She was of the opinion that the innkeeper was headed to the graveyard. Have you confirmed that? I discovered a pool of blood, near Reuchlin's grave. I was afraid of that. What else have you learned? Harlots from the Take Your Breath Away whorehouse told me how the Inquisitor slaughtered the brother of Finkelstein. <laughs> so he did sniff something out. Well, he won't learn much if he slaughtered them. Matter Dean only killed two. Hans and Aaron. He dragged an unconscious Jonas to the dungeons. That's not good. If he tortured him, then he already knows that the Pugio is one of the three blades from Kaliga. The question is whether he realizes what they are. That's not all. Another cloud has appeared in the sky. Another one? So quickly? Yes, my lady. Then we shouldn't tarry any longer. We must act! So, the dagger is one of the three blades from Caliga. I have no idea what those blades are, but there's certainly an important connection between them and Reuchlin's grave. Otherwise, I wouldn't have heard about them in the homeworld. I think I should stop by the library. I may find information about Caliga there. Brother Merrill. Welcome, Master Mortimer. What brings you here this time? Questions. He who asks a question does not err easily.
Have you heard of the Three Blades from Caliga? Three Blades from Caliga? Hmm. Not that I recall. Ask Brother Lothar. Maybe he'll know something. He's sitting over there, at the end of the hall. The place is strangely calm. Have the monks seen the clouds that have appeared in the sky? Ha! <laughs> they don't scare us. They look like Satan's work, and he's got no power over us. And if it's God that sent them, well, we'll happily obey his will. Hello, Brother Lothar. Master Madadin. Forgive the interruption, but I need your help. Do you know where the city of Caligar is? No one knows the exact location. It's not even certain whether the city existed. According to legend, it was founded by Tiberius's legionnaires, who survived the battle for Rome. Hunted by the invincible army of the faithful, they supposedly made their way to the far north and settled there. Have you heard of the Blades from Caliga? No, Master, I know nothing of them. Try speaking to the Librarian. There might be a book or two on the Three Blades. You're lying, brother. I never mentioned the number of Blades. How do you know there are three? Well, there's a certain Apocrypha. However, I don't know if I can tell you about it. I'm an Inquisitor, Brother Lothar. There is nothing you cannot tell me. Very well. You probably know that Jesus thrice fell during the Way of the Cross. Of course. Every Christian knows this. According to the Apocrypha, Jesus did not fall under the weight of the patibulum he was carrying. He fell because he was wounded by three legionnaires who were leading him to Golgotha. Gaius cut Jesus' arm with a dagger, Cassius stabbed his thigh with a sword, and Longinus thrust a spear into his calf. Three blades. I ventured that the legionnaires were among the Romans who founded the city of Caliga. Not just among them. They commanded them. The name of the city is an amalgamation of the first letters from their Latin names. C.A. from Cassius, L.O. from Longinus, and G.A. from Gaius. Kaloga. Why is the Church keeping this a secret? First, it is not known whether the Apocrypha is genuine. Other sources do not bear the information it contains. Second, it was deemed unreasonable to spread rumors about the existence of weapons that wounded God. The Blades, if they exist, may harbor great power. No one knows what could happen if they fell into the wrong hands. Luckily, they've never been found. Thank you, Brother Lothar. You've helped me greatly. Unfortunately, the blades have been found. All three are in Königstein. The mayor was right. Something sinister is afoot. It's high time I paid him a visit. Maybe that mysterious Persian of his can cast more light on the matter. Merciless Mother of God, watch over us. It's the apocalypse! Run for your lives! We're all gonna die! Run to your homes, people! Run! Damn cloud. 
Elves look like creatures that appeared in the own world. They resemble the riders of the apocalypse. Seeing them doesn't indicate anything good. Luckily, there's still any clouds. God. By the Lord's sword. Heart's been cut out. He smells of wine. Probably tried to cure himself with it. His hands are empty. Gastric problems. A necklace with the coat of arms of Königstein. What's this? A card from the deck of St. Timerius. It appears as if it fell from the mayor's hand. Justice. I wonder who the mayor's target for it was. Ingvar watches over the cards, which means that he is either involved with the murder or someone is trying to cast suspicion on him. This must be some sort of code. I wonder, what happened to the Persian? The mayor wanted to introduce me to him today, so he should be nearby. Maybe he's hiding.
Persian. It's a mannequin. The mayor said he didn't trust anyone else. If he really did bestow his secrets upon this thing, they must be inside. I probably need to beat him in chess. some other way to open the locker. Mayor's private notes. I can't trust anyone anymore. There are spies everywhere. Every citizen of Königstein could be involved in this intrigue. Even Captain Bertram. I pretend not to know or see anything, but that's only for appearances. They know I'm following their actions. I must be careful. There are two vying factions in Königstein. One is called the Cult, the other the Sabbath. The Cult is a group of Christian fanatics who consider themselves followers of the true faith. In their view, humanity is permeated with a primordial evil that causes Satan to grow ever stronger. They believe that exterminating humanity is the only means of vanquishing the devil. This is why they seek to bring about the apocalypse. The Sabbath has a different goal. It is a mysterious group founded by the first Christians who believed that Jesus should have died on the cross for humanity's sins. They believe that Jesus was possessed by the devil who forced him to descend from the cross. The black magic that was then unleashed tainted the world. They believe that the only way of restoring the disrupted order of things is to kill Jesus. I admit that bringing about the apocalypse seems just as absurd as killing Christ, who's been dead for centuries. But what if there's a grain of truth to it all? I know that both groups seek to achieve their goals with the three blades from Caliga. I didn't manage to discover the nature of these blades. One of my spies managed to determine only that Johannes Reuchlin could have been connected to all of this. The old medic got drunk at the inn once. He was bragging that he would soon change the face of the world. 
He also mentioned he'd become immortal. No one took his words seriously. However, there's no doubt that Reuchlin's sudden death and his funeral were very odd. Long ago, Johannes was a close associate of Countess Isabella. Then he became one of his eminence's men. Ingvar could probably tell me exactly what his master was dealing with. Alas, the medic is protected by the Cardinal. I cannot interrogate him. Fortunately, an Inquisitor can do what a mayor cannot. Running into each other, Inquisitor. This time it's a happy coincidence. A silver angel? For what? For delivering a message. Tell the Countess that I must speak to her about the three blades from Caliga. Can you remember that? Sure. I'll be waiting for an answer at the clinic. Is something wrong with you? No. I just need to talk to Ingvar. Run along now.
I'm looking for the Venerable Ingvar. I have not seen him today. Have you seen Ingvar, brother? I need to speak to him. He is probably at his place. He lives above the clinic. Look for the door with the rod of Asclepius on it. Tis true. Kill the horse, son! something valuable in the catacombs, since they're patrolled by the Cardinal's soldiers. some kind of trick. Of herbs and ways of brewing healing decoctions. Secrets of Persian medicine. Something doesn't add up. Oops. The Anakian alphabet. Could Ingvar be learning the language of angels? Interesting. Of necromancy and the arcane art of soul transplantation. Well, well. Someone's been dabbling in black magic. A spell allowing one to transplant a human soul into another body opposes the laws of nature. For this reason, its magic does not last. It needs to be strengthened with the blood of a fallen angel until the soul is permanently bound to a body. It is a long process. However, it can be hastened by feeding the fallen one human entrails. 
thus making his blood more potent. The mystery of the murders has been solved. Ingvar was performing a transplantation ritual. He needed the victim's organs to make the fallen angel's blood bind the soul to its new host. I wonder how he managed to gain control over him. Whose soul did he transplant? And who supplied the body? And what is that? The markings look like those after opening a door. Sanctus? Only a few people can light this flame. What did Ingvar need it for? and thorns, an Anakian circle. Whatever the purpose that drove its creation, it will not be easy to get Ingvar to reveal it. I'll learn more quickly in the Umworld. Our father, what our king, bereaves of our weakness, lest we forgive those who trespass against us, draw our evil from darkness, so we may vanquish in thy name. Amen.
the circle is moving. When the moon rises, we shall perform the summoning ritual.
can feed the farm when you're in it. They remain worthy of leading the cult. The Three Kings. Perfect. Now speak. The circle is ready. When the moon rises, we shall perform the summoning ritual. The Countess's servant has already been sacrificed. We can feed the fallen on her innards. Everything is proceeding according to plan. The girl's necklace will allow Johannes to intercept the dagger. The spear remains the only problem. We still don't know how to obtain it. Do not concern yourselves with that. The third blade will soon fall into our hands. I have personally made sure of that. Figures in the red coats. 
They committed all the murders. Each of them drew a king from the deck of St. Demarius. Even Liliana. Odd. The brothers Finkelstein claimed that Ingvar, the Cardinal, and Reuchlin drew the cards of kings. By the Lord's sword, Liliana is Reuchlin. Ingvar transplanted his soul into her. That's why he called her Johannes. Otherwise, a queen card would have appeared in her hand. I must interrogate Ingvar. And find out the nature of the three blades from Caliga, and why these damned kings want them so badly. Well, well. Speak of the devil, and he shall appear. I must admit, Inquisitor, you've managed to impress me. I figured that you'd show the Pugio to the brothers Finkelstein, which is why I pay them to mislead you. But, despite all that, you still managed to learn of the existence of the Three Blades from Caliga. Brother Merrill told me you've been inquiring about them. what these blades are. They're the weapons the Roman legionnaires used to wound Christ during his ascent to Golgotha. That's correct. What you don't know, however, is the purpose that we intend to use them for. I will gladly tell you. You only need to decide whose side you're on. Are you with us? Or are you with the Countess? I am on nobody's side. I'm the Lord's devoted servant. I knew you'd say that. You Inquisitors are so predictable. Seize him! Let's put an end to this masquerade. I know who you are. 
the Venerable Ingvar. His Eminence Ansgar von Niedrich. And the beautiful Liliana. Or rather, Johannes Reuchlin. Hello, Mortimer. You've managed to learn quite a lot. Bravo. Why Liliana? What made you choose her? Well, she was the only one we had on hand. Johannes was poisoned. Liliana and I found him dying in a cell. But it was too late to save him. I had to use a spell devised by Magnus of Potvar that allows for the transfer of one soul into a different body. I extracted the soul from Johannes and implanted it into Liliana. Thanks to her, we managed to obtain the Pugio. So it all turned out for the best in the end. You obtained it and lost it. You are to blame for that, Inquisitor. Remember when we were assaulted in the alley? I hurt my arm there because of you. A seemingly harmless cut became the gate through which Liliana's soul returned to her body. When that idiot figured out she had killed the harlot, she panicked. And for a while, I lost access to her mind. That was when she got rid of the dagger. Luckily, the blade found its way back to us. You're followers of the cult. Heretics. Your fate is sealed. I find your arrogance irritating, Inquisitor. It is you who were on your knees before us, not the opposite. Wait, Ingvar. Let's give him a chance. Before my soldiers rendered you unconscious, you said that you were not on anyone's side. I hope that you'll change your mind once you understand our goal. You want to bring about the Apocalypse. It's the only way to purge the world of filth and omnipresent evil. The end must come if we are to have a new beginning. The wheel has already been set in motion. We have summoned the Four Horsemen into the Unworld. So that's what the Anarchian Circle is for. I thought that you'd summon the Fallen Angel. But you had gone well beyond that. That's the reason for these accursed clouds. Were the killings also connected to this? The ritual required human sacrifices. The Countess's servant had the necklace. The mayor was close to uncovering the truth and the innkeeper was spying for Isabella. By murdering them, you managed to kill two birds with one stone. And what about the harlot? Why her? She was an easy and necessary target. You are fools if you believe you'll be able to control the horsemen. Once they cross over into our world, they will destroy everything and everyone, including you. We will not be the ones commanding them. Jesus will. Jesus? Everyone thinks that he died centuries ago. <laughs> but that is not true. Christ only fell into lethargy. And we will soon awaken him. When our Lord returns to us, the words of the Revelation will be fulfilled. The Four Horsemen will purge the earth of sinners and non-believers. Christ will then lead the followers of the cult to create a new world, one based on the words of the Scripture.
How do you mean to accomplish that? The three blades from Kalaga are the key. Each of them can be used to open the door to the Unworld, where Jesus' slumbering emanation resides. It is the only weapon with which God can be killed. Its power will make Christ awaken from his lethargy. When this comes to pass, we will hand the blades over to him in an act of offertory, which will make him invincible. Three gifts from the Three Kings. The Gladius has been in our hands for a long time. We already have the Pugio as well. Unfortunately, Isabella still has the Hosta. We plan to take the spear from her by force, but the bitch's palace is a fortress. A small force is enough to defend it. Even a mighty army will break on its walls. Unlike a man whom she had previously hosted as her guest before. You want me to steal the third blade for you? If you do this, you will have the honor of resurrecting Christ Vengeful. Just think. You'll be given an opportunity to commune with the Creator. I will never join your sect. Release me and hand over the blades from Caligo, and I promise to be merciful. I will give you a quick death. <laughs> You are not in the best position to negotiate. Inquisitors don't negotiate with heretics. They just kill them. You're wrong. This time, it's the Inquisitor who will die. We had hoped you would agree to get the Hasta for us. But in truth, we don't truly need it. We already have the third blade. We are looking at it right now. Remember the card you drew from the deck of St. Tamarius? Carte Blanche? That's correct. It was blank because you can replace any other card from the deck with it. I don't understand. I'm not surprised to hear that. When I realized we couldn't obtain the third blade, I started looking for an alternative. It was then that I learned that the solution to our problems could be you, Master Metadine. Yes, it was I who sent the information about the vampire to the Holy Office. I also pulled some strings, so that you would be sent to investigate the case. I did so, because you carry within you something that will replace the third blade. You've mistaken me for someone else. I carry nothing within me. Poor Mortimer. People went to great lengths to make you think that. It was hidden within you when you were a child. Unfortunately, we're going to have to kill you to extract it. Why didn't you do that immediately? That thing has great power. There is a danger that we will not be able to control it. We also believed you would join us. However, you made a different choice. You leave us no choice, Inquisitor. Take comfort in the fact that you'll die by the very weapon that wounded our Lord. No! Cut the bindings! It's the only way 
to save Liliana. Kill her, Inquisitor. She's lying. You will not deceive me, old man. Die, dog! You won't stop me, Inquisitor. Come! I summon you! He's got a weapon! Sick him, friend! Get out of here! <laughs> Pitiful fool. You won't hurt me with that pathetic weapon. Pretty well for a human, but you will die soon.
I will die if I don't think of something quickly. By the nails of thorns. The mask of the merry executioner from Tiano. It's my only hope. It is likely enough that I am going to my doom. The last march of the Inquisitor.
that's the pickle that I'm in. I can't remove it without skin. Only God and death have control over the mask. How did you manage to take it off? Just grabbed it and removed it. Lucky for me, speaking in those pathetic rhymes was driving me crazy. How did you get here anyway, Scam? I came to the clinic as you told me to. You weren't there. But friend picked up your scent and followed it. He's the one that brought me here. And now he's dead. He died defending you, like a true friend. Can you tell me what the Countess said in response? I wasn't able to talk to her. Her guards didn't let me into the palace. I told them I had an important message for her, but they laughed at me. That's all right. I will handle it myself. Can I say goodbye to him? Of course. The courts of St. Demarius. They may come in handy. Let's get out of here, Scab. Farewell, friend. I will never forget you. How did you get your hands on Shurskin? Remember when I came to the inn for my Silver Angel? I took some from your pouch before I woke you up. I would never have given it to myself. However, God had a different plan, it seems does work in mysterious ways. Why did he take Friend away from me? It wasn't God who took him from you, Scamp, but a fallen angel. So why didn't God stop him? He is all-powerful after all. God doesn't do things for us. He only provides... You move at a snail's pace. Opportunities, allowing us to choose one of many paths. I don't understand. Are you saying we could have saved Friend? That we had an opportunity but failed to see it? I'm saying he also had a choice. It's not fair. I know, Scamp. But that's how life is. The sooner you accept it, the easier time you'll have getting through it. The Lord's sword. What's going on here? The riots in town have gotten worse ever since the fourth cloud appeared in the sky. Fourth? By the nails and thorns. What now? I must get something from the Countess. I know an underground entrance to the palace. It's the fastest way. Come on, I'll take you.
Not a soul in sight. Let's have a look inside the palace. Maybe we'll find someone there. What do you think? Where is everybody? I have no idea. Maybe they found out about the riots and fled. I doubt it. The Countess's palace is a fortress. Her guards would have no trouble defending it. So, why isn't anyone here? We'll find out soon, I hope. By the Lord's sword. What happened here? Uh, are the, they all dead? It looks like it. I'll see if anyone survived. You hurry and get help. Those who did this may still be in the palace. All right. I think it's Nantal. Uh, uh, Master Matterdeen. Nasty wound. Luckily, it's not bleeding. But leave it. What happened here? It was Isabella. She's the vampire you've been looking for. The Countess. When the second cloud appeared in the sky, Isabella ordered me to bring a few paupers from the harbor to the palace. She claimed that his eminence was a follower of the cult, and that he meant to bring about the apocalypse. I was convinced that she wanted to stop him by stirring up the common folk against him. But you were wrong. The Countess led the paupers to a secret chamber, and ordered that no one disturb them. <sighs> After several hours, she emerged from the chamber as a bloodthirsty monster. It was then that I realized that she was a member of the Sabbath, and that she wanted to use the blades from Galaga to carry out her own plan. How do you know about the cult, the Sabbath, and the Three Blades? I am a spy for the Holy Office's inner circle. I discovered everything by collecting information about Kalaga. You must stop the Countess. Unfortunately, I won't be able to help you. Forgive me. She's fainted. Nantel mentioned a secret chamber. The Countess is probably hiding there. A necklace worn by the Countess's servants could be useful. This might be the entrance to the secret chamber. Sesame. It's high time I ended this.
Master Matterdeen, I see you've managed to acquire the second blade. You've arrived just in time. I could use your help. Don't be so sure, Countess. I have different intentions. Hear me out first, then decide. I know full well who you are, and what you intend. I also know that you will never succeed. You cannot kill Christ. He's already dead. You don't understand anything, Inquisitor. You didn't see the crucifixion, but I was there. As Jesus ascended Golgotha, I was chosen. I became one of the beings of light, tasked with spreading his word. Unfortunately, Christ succumbed to Satan's whispers. He descended from the cross, though he was supposed to die on it. The black magic that manifested at that moment defiled the world, changing the beings of light into vampires hungering for blood. Those of us who believed that evil could be undone created the Sabbath. For fifteen hundred years, we've been seeking a solution. And at long last, I have found it. I will venture a guess and say that your solution is the Three Blades from Caliga. You think that Christ is dead, but it is not true. His dark emanation exists in the Unworld as the Merc. I will annihilate it with the Hasta. Then the divine plan will be fulfilled. Jesus will die for humanity's sins. The Unworld will become paradise, and light will once again fill the hearts of vampires. If one blade is enough to get the job done, why did you need the others? Their power was meant to give me the strength necessary to fight the Merc. I waited patiently until an opportunity to obtain them could present itself. However, the clouds heralding the coming of the Four Horsemen made me realize that I needed to hurry. You knew that the cult meant to bring about the apocalypse? Not the cult. Reuchlin. Johannes used to share my beliefs. He even helped me uncover the truth about the blades from Caliga. But then... He lost himself to the foul vision of the world spread by the followers of the cult centuries ago. Johannes infected Ingvar and the Cardinal with it, but he didn't share his full knowledge with them. That is what allowed him to pull the strings. Of the three of them, only he posed a real danger. So you poisoned him? Unfortunately, it was not effective. When the clouds began appearing in the sky, it became obvious that Ingvar had managed to save Reutlin. I realized then that I had to act with greater haste to gain an advantage over my foes. I only needed the strength that the three blades were supposed to grant me. So I did something I desperately wished to avoid. I awoke my vampiric power. By feeding on human blood. I hoped that a few paupers would suffice, but I was wrong. The taste of blood stirred dark desires and a hunger that I was not able to control. I had to kill everyone at the palace to satisfy those urges. It is possible that I will burn in hell for this. But if this is the price for restoring the light, then I am ready to pay it. 
I will face God with my head held high. But first, I will stop the apocalypse. There will be no apocalypse. Ingvar Reuchlin and the Cardinal are dead. Their death is not enough. The four horsemen must be sent back into the void from whence they were summoned. If they remain in the Unworld any longer, they will create a gate through which they will cross over into our world, and we will then meet our doom. You know just as well as I do that God did not send you here for nothing. Help me, Inquisitor. Let the Lord's will be done. I am a servant of God. I will never support heresy. Hand over the spearhead, Countess. If you don't, I will take it from you by force. Fool! You ruin everything! I will not let you! You've won, Inquisitor. But it is not the end. You must send back the horsemen. Remember, an act of sacrifice is the only way. Countess wasn't lying when she talked about the strength coming from the Three Blades.
by the Lord's sword, Amelia. I took her to the Unworld with me.
worked. Where are you, Inquisitor? Help me! Amelia! Too late. She's trapped here forever. of his will, hiding in Amelia's body this whole time. That is why she was able to remove the cursed mask from my face. Destroy it, Mortimer. It drips with evil. Will you save the girl? That is not in my power. Used her, and now you're leaving her. Don't be sentimental, Inquisitor. The end justifies the means. 
You have followed this principle yourself. It allowed you to triumph over your enemies. In the end? You mean the Three Blades from Canada? Were you here for them? Where are they? Are you asking about this? Tis but dust, Scamp. But also, so much more. Who are you? My guardian angel? Your guardian angel? Wake up, Inquisitor! There. Finally. Ugh. You were right about the Bloodsucker. The damned Count has covered her tracks. Well, I don't know what miracle let you survive this bloodbath, but believe me when I say that I'm glad to see you in good health. Miracles come from faith, Captain. You don't look well. There. Take a swig of the Devil's Vintage. It'll clear your mind right up. What's the situation in town? We managed to restore order with the help of the military from the nearby garrison. Are the strange clouds still in the sky? The wind blew them away as we were making our way here. That's good. Where's that prying scamp you sent for us? She ran here at breakneck speed. She's gone. Huh. Gone without a trace, eh? That's typical of her. If you ask me, she's probably snooping around the palace. Never mind that. What are your plans? I will go to Rome. I must give the account of all that's happened here to my superiors. That's quite the journey. Take the Devil's Vintage with you. It'll keep you warm on the road when the rains come. <sighs> Thank you, Captain. You're a good man. I hope we meet again. Master Matterdine, wait. I believe this is yours. Burn the damn thing. Or don't. I'll take the mask with me. To escape from nasty scrapes. Sometimes not will do but japes.